I've been reading a book on brainwashing by Robert Lifton about the communist Chinese brainwashing of people in the 1950s, early 1950s. And it's been fascinating to, to read exactly how they went about doing things. But as I read the book, I realized, oh my goodness, this is not just about brainwashing. This is about a lot of different things. And one of the things that it seems to be about is men's issues and feminists and male feminists. Because the more I read this book, the more I saw some similarities in both the way that feminists have treated men and in the ways that male feminists uh, treat themselves. So uh, let's look at what Lifton said about the basics of brainwashing first, and we'll go from there. You know, the first thing Lifton says is the Chinese went about uh, attacking the identity of the person. That was the first thing they did, attack the identity over and over and over again. Relentless attacks over and over in captivity. If people were to disagree with the attacks, they'd be put in chains, they'd be uh, made to stand for long periods, all kinds of terrible things. Uh, so people learn very quickly that if you disagree with the communist Chinese, uh, no matter how truthful you are, you're going to be punished. At, at any rate, uh, the first element is this attack of identity. Then the next element is once the identity is softened up a little bit, you move in with guilt and with shame. You move in with guilt and shame. So the Chinese first attacked the identity, and then they said to the people, you know, there's something wrong with you. You know, you're an imperialist, an imperialist who ruined the world. You know, and, and you're, there's something wrong with you because you're imperialist. And they hammered this away over and over. They put people in the middle of these groups of people who would just be yelling at them, telling them they were imperialists. And the, the way they had acted and what they'd done and just who they were had caused great trouble for so many people because they were this imperialist problem. So as I read that, it kind of made me think, oh boy, you know, that's exactly what has happened with feminism and with men. From the beginning, even at Seneca Falls in the 19th century, feminism was about attacking men. Men were blamed for all of women's ills. And attacks of men's identity, every kind of thing you can think of. You know, men are pigs, men are this, men are that, men cause wars. If only women ruled the world, everything would be wonderful. Attack, attack, attack. Men cause the economy to be bad. Men are violent, men are this, men are that. Our identity of men was attacked over and over and over again until now, 50 years later, feminism basically can stop attacking men's identity because the whole rally cry of men being bad has been taken up by, by the uh, media and by the legislatures and by the family courts and, and the water cooler. I mean, every place you look now, the prevailing assumption is there's something wrong with men. There's something wrong with men. If only men would change, the world would be a better place. So it struck me right off the bat that, oh my gosh, you know, this is exactly what was done to men. But even more importantly, what I realized was that Lifton started talking about what the uh, people would do who were the captives, who were whose identity was attacked, and then the shame and guilt was pumped into them over and over again. And one of the things he said was, in order to survive, you must confess. Think about that. In order to survive, you must confess. And this is exactly what we see from the male feminists. They confess all of their guilt. I've been a part of this man thing for so long. I've been in this masculine thing for so long. Because of me, the world is not a good place, etc., etc., etc. Now, what happens when you confess repeatedly? And what Lifton showed in his book is that when these captives would confess repeatedly over and over again, it would chip away at their worldview. It would chip away at their identity, and it would chip away with their point of origin. So that as they admitted, oh, I'm an imperialist, this or that, slowly that starts to degrade their connection with their own group. And we can see the same thing with male feminists. As they start confessing, as they start betraying basically men by blaming men for this and that, each time we betray something, what happens? We get more detached from that part. Every time we betray, we get detached and 
We start looking for reasons to justify our betrayal. And I think we've seen that also. Now, the other piece of all this is how the feminists are very similar to the communist Chinese. One of the things Lufton talked about was that the communist Chinese um, would attack the identity, which, of course, we see feminism as doing in spades, but they would do so from a place of infallibility. Infallibility. So the Chinese could never be wrong. And boy, I don't know about you, but that's what I've seen with feminism. You cannot argue with them. You can't, if you say there's something wrong with feminism, immediately you're accused of being a misogynist or a woman hater. So feminism kind of attacks men from this place of infallibility, just like the communist Chinese, and then they try and use the guilt and shame and build that up and build it up until the men start feeling as though there's something wrong with them, not because of something they've done, but because of something they are. They are men, and therefore there's something inherently wrong with them. Okay, so that's kind of a brief tour of the whole brainwashing piece and how it's connected in with feminism and male feminists. But I've written an article on this. It goes into a whole bunch more detail than we've had time to talk about in this little YouTube. And you can see a link to it right up there in the corner right now. And there's actually two articles. One is um, about feminism, and the other is about <laughs> the other is about the male feminists and their reaction to things. So have a look at those and let me know what you think. And keep in mind, and don't forget, men are good.